Hello. Oh, hi. To the... Oh, hey. Oh, hey there. Welcome to another uh, episode of uh, Man Buns and Jesus. We are the Man Buns. You are not Jesus. <laughs> um, I don't know how like we come up with dumber and dumber intros to every episode, Josh. But I, I do think this is a, a steady decline to the point that it is in itself remarkable. So... Yeah. It's um it's getting better in how bad it's getting. <laughs> yeah. That's uh Pastor Josh Laborious with us from California. Um somehow a state's still there. I'm Pastor Ben Olschlager in the great state of Michigan. Um yeah, we're alive, it's a Monday. Uh Josh, what are we talking about today? <laughs> yeah, uh We've reached a point where my pre-workout caffeine is no longer enough. And that's terrifying for anyone who knows how much caffeine is in those things. Um, I need to get more sleep. In any case, we are talking about Proverbs. This is our fourth episode of Pro Tips. And yes, yes, fourth episode of Pro Tips, Proverbs 11. Let's ju- let's get into it. Proverbs eleven verse twelve, which is. Set- I think we got through eleven last time. I think we're on twelve. On chapter twelve? No, sorry, you're right. Yeah, I'm chapter eleven. I misheard 12. you. I'm I misheard you. That's okay, Jesus. I repent. The rest of us are working on it. Um, <laughs> that's ironic. Uh, chapter eleven verse twelve says, "Whoever belittles his neighbor lacks sense." But a man of understanding remains silent. Ooh, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would say I'm in trouble, but uh, I think we already knew that I don't, I lack sense. So there's, I can accept that. That's fair. That's fair. Something, I'm going to say this. Uh, I think it probably took me through college to learn this. Um it rarely makes sense to talk smack. It's the, in the second line, a man of understanding remains silent. Um, because if you belittle your neighbor, they have the opportunity to prove you wrong. But if you just kind of stand there and nod and they grow, then you can congratulate them on their growth and, and just kind of move on with your life. Um, but if you're constantly, and, and, when you belittle people, you're damaging the relationship. And yeah, relationally, that makes sense too. I want to explain a rule to all of our listeners. And if you think this isn't a rule and that there's no truth to it, please correct me. Um, Because we had this conversation with my high schoolers last night. Men, for the most part, uh, obviously this is broad generalities. But men who are friends with other men or boys, guys, whatever, guys that are friends with guys will insult each other. And it is a, it is not belittling. It is a mark of affection when you make fun of your friends. But the rule is you don't make fun of something that's true unless they have cracked the joke first. So if you have a super fat friend, fat jokes are off limits unless that unless they've made fun of themselves once they start cracking fat jokes all bets are off go for it um this is the rule of god so if if you have a fat friend but they're really smart you can make fun of how stupid they are like this is this is a general rule for guys um obviously i don't know from firsthand experience but from what I, i have observed and uh and been told Women do not insult each other as a sign of affection. It is is generally sincere. And uh, so a note for that, if if you see guys interacting with guys and they're making fun of each other, it it probably doesn't, they might lack sense, but that might be a separate issue. They're they're probably not belittling each other. Um, They're probably just friends who are making fun of each other. And that's, a good general rule i found is that is that a fair assessment of reality i think so and 
I don't know, just to put a spin on this that like kind of points to the truth of that statement. The funnest bachelor party activity I've ever been a part of was screaming things at a guy who was about to get married in a way that sounded insulting, but were actually very uplifting. The bachelor party is that you have been a part of are clearly very different from the ones that I have been a part of. Is all I'm going to say about that. Have you ever seen the videos of the guy? Uh, this is a little bit of a tangent, but if you're if you think stuff like this is entertaining, there's a guy who does polite catcalling. Yes. So he yeah. like he has the loud horn and he, and he says, "Yo, girl, you look like you pay your taxes on time." Yep. It's it. I love it. It's I think it's entertaining. Yep. Uh, so verse 13 shall we yeah whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing covered i think this is kind of a twofer in an unintended way well i mean it was solomon inspired by god so i'm sure it was intended but continue Okay, whatever. Um, so, like, when someone slanders, at least in our, I'm gonna, I'm gonna nerd out here for a second. As I'm talking, hopefully. So, my initial thought was. As someone is slandering, obviously they're betraying something about someone else that wasn't supposed to be known or isn't true that people will now think, right? Um, you know, example being like you lie about someone's uh, personal life in a way that's, uh, that that impacts their professional life. Um, Oops. So you you like in that way you're damaging their reputation. Um but my head also went to the the person who's doing the the like um doing the slandering, they also betray something about their themselves as like a person of low character. Yeah, well, and to add on to that, a lot of times, and th this isn't a rule, this is just something that happens a lot, when people are slandering others about something, a lot of times that is something that they themselves are insecure about, so they're revealing a lot of times that that might be a weakness of themselves also, so... I yeah, I think the the secrets that are revealed aren't necessarily just the secrets of the the target of the slander, but also um, also of the the slanderer, as it were. Yeah, and I'm interesting. I'm interested to know more about like what the word for slander is there. Because oh, now want I'm going. Logo sit quick. That well, that's what I'm doing right now. For anyone who doesn't know, Logos uh, does not sponsor this podcast. Although that would be super cool if they did. If you hear this and have any pull at Logos and could get this sponsored, that would be super cool. But uh, Logos is a Bible software. I I think most people would agree it's the best Bible software available. Um, it's it's super expensive, but that's you know. You're, you pay for what you get. Um, but it has all these books. It links all these books, but it also does a really good job of bringing out original languages. So the Greek and the Hebrew, and it'll tell you uh, it, it's a great tool. You have to at least kind of understand a language to understand what the tool is telling you. 
um, but it'll give you translations. It'll give you the part of speech it is, what the conjugation of the verb is, what the force of the verb is, all of which is what Ben is looking up about uh, slander, which because this is Proverbs, it would have been written in Hebrew or Aramaic for anyone who's curious. Have I killed enough time for you or are you still? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, so like, go for it. The, the way that it's translating it seems to be the, the most like standard take on the word but it also kind of has the sense of informer mm. or informant so if you're a rat you reveal secrets yeah that, <laughs> that checks out right yep. okay um yeah and like i think generally the the rule of thumb should be if it's your secret, if it's not your secret to share, you shouldn't be sharing it, right? You know what they say, loose lips sink ships. They did say that, yeah. Often in reference to men spending the evening with women of ill repute. Um, also don't do that. <laughs> also don't do that, yeah. But also, like, this kind of relates to the last thing that we were talking about, too. Like, it's easy, especially if you're um, intent on slandering or intent on informing, or uh, Christian Standard Bible translated as translates it as a gossip. Um, I, yeah, those seem very closely related. Yeah. That, like, that almost splits the difference between slant because isn't the legal definition of slander is something that's negative and false. Yes. And informing would be true. And I feel like a gossip mixes the two. Yeah. Some of the things so, the gossip might share are true. Some of them aren't true. And they just kind of. They're happy to tell the tale. Share indiscriminately. Yeah. They're happy to tell the tale. And I think kind of what this basically says is when and where we can we ought to be in the business of defending the honor of our neighbor yes because an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind <laughs> um and if your neighbor were equally as intent on turning around and destroying your life they could do it in a heartbeat no well, and so that that comes, that's part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, right, is we're, we're seeking to build up our neighbor. But another part is also, I don't know if this is technically still the Sermon on the Mount, but he says, uh, let your yes be no, yes and your no be no. Don't swear oaths. And the, the kind of, the understanding that undergirds this, and this gets at the second half of this Proverbs verse, is for you to be able to live your life never having to swear by anything where you just say yes you don't have to say i promise you don't have to say i swear you you just say yes and people take you at it that means you have to live your life in such a trustworthy manner that that is good enough for people that you said something and it is going to happen or that it's true or whatever um which gets at this second part, he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps the thing covered. And I think it's valuable to be able to identify those people in your life who are that trustworthy spirit. Um, those people who you would trust at their word, they say, yes, you know, it's yes. Um, so. Also kind of like interesting parallel there to the role of your pastor. Um Josh and I are not mandatory reporters, which is at once a interesting position to be in for like comforting reasons. Cause like people can tell us stuff and they know it's not going to make it back to the people that it might impact. Um, but at the same time, it puts us in a precarious situation of like, well, what do we do when somebody you know, puts themselves out there as, as potentially a danger to themselves or others. Um, For anyone who's and, not familiar with that 
lingo, a mandatory reporter, especially I've mostly heard that term used with like education safety kind of stuff. If you're a mandatory yeah. reporter and you suspect that a child is being abused or something, then you are obligated to inform authorities. Now, Ben and I, we have something called the confessional seal. And this is something that traditionally trained pastors take very seriously in that if something is said to us in confession or generally this extends to any form of pastoral counseling that is then a secret that we take with us to the grave um it is the only it is the only form kind of of formal secret keeping that cannot be compelled to be broken in a court of law. Like you have FERPA, you have HIPAA, which are privacy for uh, medical and for education settings. Uh, but under certain circumstances, a court of law can compel you to share what would be private records. Um, but they have to be pretty, uh, pretty extreme circumstances, but they exist. No court of law can force better I to share something that is said in confidence to us. Um, so bring that up to say, like, the congregations that have called Josh and I trust us to keep things covered. They trust us enough that they know if they come talk to us about a thing that they're struggling with, it's not going to end up front page news of the congregational newsletter you know grandma schmidt slept with uh the farmer boy down the row and road when she was 15 and now she's feeling guilty about it um like that's not where i thought that story was gonna end but we can move right along <laughs> all of that is to say like the I would hope that your pastor is a person that you trust enough to to bear your heart when you're struggling and to know that they're going to keep those things close to the chest. Um they're not going to spread thing spread information that's going to harm you. You know, et cetera, et cetera. And then if that is true and hopefully that's true for you, kind of look at that as a a marker of this is the kind of person that I want to be bearing my secrets if I'm struggling and I want to share that with. That's a good friend. Is somebody that you trust to bear your secrets, maybe in a similar way to the, the way you would trust your pastor? No. Um, 14? Sure. Where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an in abundance of counselors, there is safety. Uh, go to church is, I mean, what I see in this is you should be surrounding yourselves with people who are willing to give you godly guidance. Um, so this is where if someone says, well, I'm a Christian, I don't need church, I would disagree. You should be surrounded by counselors. Um, faithful ones, right? And your friends from the bar, while they might be more than willing to give you advice, uh, there is no guarantee that it is going to be anything resembling godly advice. <clears throat> in fact, depending on how you made those friends in the first place, the chances might be greater that it's not. So there's that. <laughs> um, Yeah, I feel like this maybe even applies more broadly to like to more of a civic or civil realm. Like when we're looking at the way that we Tackle problems, <clears throat> excuse me, tackle problems that we find in our communities, like 
we can't assume that any one person has all of the right ideas. Because only one person in the history, history of humanity has actually been that person. Yeah, and his name is Jesus, and as far as I can tell, he hasn't come back yet. Yeah, and that's not um, something you would miss. Uh... Yeah, I, you know, coming on the clouds, that's going to go on Facebook in a heartbeat, and <laughs> like, there's no way that you aren't aware. Um, right? I don't think it's, it'll even take Facebook. Uh, you won't miss it. Yeah. I mean, it could happen on the other side of the world from you, so you'd, you'd never, like... I feel like it's God coming to Earth, you'd still not miss it. Touche. Yeah. Um, it'll be like one of those giant faces in Rick and Morty. Um... <laughs> Show me what you got. Yeah. Um. Where was I going with this? I don't know. Oh, yeah. So, like, <clears throat> I feel like we fall into this on, on like, a, on an inter intermittent level. We're, like, we trust a single leader in a lot of cases to have all of the answers to all of our problems rather than assembling a group of wise people to to help us process things um like we all we look in a single direction and we're like you know do do the work and we'll figure out how to make it happen um rather than working cooperatively trusting different people to use their skills and abilities you know yada 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 um, and especially I see this in government where like when you elect president, they set the tone for the party and for the legislative session. When you elect a governor, they set the tone for your state's legislature. When you elect a mayor, it sets the direction for your city. Like whatever their priorities are, that's what's going to get done in your city. And unless they trust someone, or unless the community trusts someone else, or unless the country trusts someone else to get things done, like, you're not actually going to be able to keep up with all the things that face your, face your community. <clears throat> Apply that same logic to your church. If you as a, uh, a member bring in a pastor, they are going to have their skills, they're going to have their expertise. Um, they're going to have what they're trained to do, which is preach, teach, administer the sacraments, and care for those in need. But there's only one of them, and they tend to burn out much faster than we ever want to admit. Um, so don't lean on your pastor for everything. Spoiler alert, that's going to be the next episode. We're recording twice back to back. So when I'm wearing the same shirt, don't judge me. Um, Josh has got to go out of town for something next week. So yeah. 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 Uh, whoever puts up security for a stranger will surely suffer harm. But he who hates striking hands in pledge is secure. What's that old, uh, I think it's Ben, one of Ben Franklin's sayings, never a borrower nor a lender be. I've always operated with, well, I shouldn't say that. As far as I can recall, I've always operated with the attitude, do not lend someone money that you can, <laughs> that you can't afford to lose. And I, th I mean, I think that's true. And when it says put up security, I think it's not necessarily just talking about money. It's also like, don't, uh, don't back up someone's word with your like honor or reputation. If you don't know them from Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they could be fine. 
they could also be a con man or the scum of the earth. Like you don't you don't know them. So maybe get to know them. That would be a good Christian thing to do. Build a relationship and then you can <laughs> decide whether or not you're you're willing to back them up. Yeah. That's typically a good place to start. And I think it also is is worth noting that it's talking about putting up security for a stranger. Like this is different than your son, daughter, brother, sister needs 500 bucks for security deposits. So they just graduated college and they're broke as dirt. Um, what are you talking about? Dirt has rare metals in it. It's a lot more than most college kids have. It's fair. <clears throat> They are broke as um, the surface of the L.A. River. Um, okay. Bare shattered that concrete. Um, anyway, they, uh, like, when you have someone in your life that you trust, that you know, that you have some confidence in, and they are in need. Like you can have a sense of whether or not it's worth lending them money. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was trying the the extended silence there for our listeners. I was deciding whether or not I was gonna jump into a tangent, but I resisted, so... Tangent, tangent, tangent. No, it wasn't a good tangent. It was a it was a Josh has weird rules for how he plays his life tangent. Um, okay. Verse 16, a gracious woman gets honor. That seems to track. And violent men get riches. Again, seems like a fairly honest honest take on reality and i think if you look in american society today for the most part we do not solve things with violence in the literal sense but if you look at men who are hyper successful in, in fact if you just look at people who are hyper successful it is because they are aggressive in pursuing the things that they want um, so if you're willing to say violence in a more metaphorical sense, this is still incredibly true, even in our daily lives. Yeah. Um, I mean, what was the, oh, his nickname was Pharma Bro. I can't remember the guy's actual name, but it was a a young CEO of a drug company who came in and made the company extremely wealthy by just taking up the, or taking the medications that they had that were uh, like essential for covering certain very rare um, diseases and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Very rare, like diseases and and other health issues, and jacking the the ever living daylights out of the price, because people still needed the drug in order to survive, and he didn't care that it was crippling people with debt to make it happen, and like to me. That's just, it's ruthless violence. Metaphorically. Yes, and I think that's an important but it is, clarification because there are, it's important to distinguish between metaphorical violence and literal violence, I, I think, um, because there are some places where that distinction is not made and they really need the be. same thing. Yes. <laughs> right? And metaphorical but, violence does not justify literal violence. Ladies yes. And gentlemen. Um, but what this man did, in effect, 
put the lives, literal lives of people in, at stake because of his desire for profit. Yes. And that is never like, is that a way that people make money? Yes. Yes. Is it an ethical way to make money? No. Heck no. Yeah. So verse 16, a good description of reality, not necessarily a prescription for going about life. Um, um, maybe even a good segue here. A man who is kind benefits himself, but a cruel man hurts himself. I think the guy's name was Martin Scarelli. Do better, Martin. Yeah. Um, yeah, if, well, and this is something like, not everyone is going to reciprocate, but if you treat people with kindness, the tendency will be for them to treat you with kindness. Um, it's one of those, we don't believe in karma, but karma probably just comes from a natural observation of how the world works. Yeah. If you're kind, people will be kind back to you. If you're a jerk, people will be a jerk back to you. See season one, episode one. Yep. Like what goes around comes around, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Because um, and here's the thing, if you're if you're cruel to someone, you're the second they're in a position to do the same back, mm -hmm. the, the temptation and the tendency is they will repay you for that. Now, maybe they're gracious, maybe they're forgiving, and they don't, but that's <laughs> That's not what human nature is going to encourage them to do. So. Yeah. The, my wife and I are watching this show. Uh, it's a British murder mystery kind of show. Um, and the very first episode is like this beautiful portrayal of that where um, this woman tries to cover up her husband's bankruptcy by bailing him out with a loan from another account that she does accounting for which belongs to this other woman uh other woman's business and uh in the long run people figure out what what happened and she attempts to commit murder in order to cover it up and like to solve one small thing she ends up tearing her life down um and it's it's never worth it. Like, be kind, be honest, be Christian. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then we we have a couple. If you haven't listened to the previous episode, we kind of agreed the the ones that say doing the right thing will pay off will like will pay off in the long run, and doing the wrong thing won't. We got a few of those. We got uh, verse 18, the wicked earns deceptive wages. The one who sows righteousness gets a sure reward. And then 19, whoever steadfast in righteousness will live, but he who perceives, pursues evil will die. Uh, 20, those of a crooked heart are an abomination to the Lord, but those of blameless ways are his delight. Uh, 21, be assured an evil person will not go unpunished. The offspring of the righteous will be delivered. Um so those are all kind of uh, do the right thing uh, and it'll work out for you. Verse two, this is a great one. Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman without discretion. Uh, oh, what a waste. This is literally a pearls before a swine situation. Yeah. We talked about that not too long ago, right? We did. Like that's also the comment I make anytime anyone offers me like high like uh I was at a Bible site last week and they had I want to say it was I'm gonna get this wrong and someone's gonna be mad about it. I want to say it was Glenn Levitt, 14 year with a blue label, all of which is supposed to be significant for whiskey or bourbon drinkers. Anyway, it was this nice, 
it was it was a nice bottle of liquor and someone gave me a glass of it and i was like you're this is wasting it because i don't know what this is pearls before swine i don't even know what i'm supposed to be appreciating here um and they're like how and i ha- and i drank some and they're like how is it i was like i mean good but also i'm happy with the ten dollar captain morgan from the bottom shelf of the liquor store so like <laughs> you're wasting this on me okay <laughs> yeah i appreciate it scott i really do if you listen to these but uh <laughs> it's better spent elsewhere i assure you um in regards to verse 22 this i i think this is true for both men and women but oh yeah definitely if you spend all of your time being so concerned about your physical appearance and you're a, a terrible person like you're a, you're a pig with gold in your nose like that's uh no matter how hot you are if you're a trashy person you're i mean you're still a trashy person um it's just in a really good looking garbage can so be a good person Although, okay, here's a tangent I, I want to jump in because I want to ask your opinion. Because okay. as a society, we have decided that intellect and how someone thinks is more important than their physical characteristics. So if you break up with someone, if you're dating, right? If you break up with someone because they're dumb and you can't connect intellectually, it's like, oh, that's fine. That's an acceptable reason. If you break up with someone because they have gotten fat, you are shallow and a pig. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, I think that's a little bit of a double standard because to keep up your intellect, to keep up, to learn and grow intellectually, that takes a lot of work. And there's a lot that goes into that, which I think is why we say, well, that's not shallow because that's representative of their character, of their discipline, whatever. I would argue that uh, maintaining your physical appearance is similarly required. Like I've, I've had to work a lot harder at staying. I mean, I mean, I'm not in great shape, but staying at the shape I'm at, that has required a lot more work of me than uh, learning has. So on some level, I'm like, I don't know how shallow it is because it, it's for someone to be in, in great shape and to take care of their body, that takes just as much discipline and effort and dedication as intellectual growth. I think both of those are less important than character. But when I read this, I'm like, don't completely discount our bodies, which is also, that's what is it, Platonist? Is that the is that the right? It's also a form of not. It's a form of gnosticism. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. So, all of this to say, I I think sometimes we don't give. And I'm saying physical appearance, but I'm really going more with fitness. Enough credit. I think the fine line to draw there. is why their fitness is suffering yes because for some people fitness suffers like i'm i'm of the 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 class of the world that struggles with his weight due to stress related reasons like when i'm stressed i put on weight i can't really help it that much um my activity level doesn't change that much i just put on weight yeah um and so that's like it's a constant battle for me as to to like where that kind of lies well and the flip side is the same because there are people who are in great shape and they never do anything for it true so maybe maybe the way to look at this is less like physical appearance less more what work fitness just like take care of how them. invested are you in taking care of yourself yeah I think yeah. it's fair, but it, it's something I was I was thinking about in the gym the other day. I was like, you know what? 
this stuff is a lot of work. Yeah. If someone's not willing to put in this kind of work to take care of themselves, I think that's a valid reason to be like, mm, that's a no for me, dog. Mm -hmm. In like a dating relationship. Um, anyway, these are the things that I muse over because I'm when I'm in the gym. Anyway. Uh, but I do love the image of a gold ring and a pig snout. In fact, yeah. if I, I think if I had a pig, I don't know why I would have a pig, but if I had a pig, I think I might put a gold ring in its snout. Not like a real gold ring, but like a, a faux gold ring. Because that would be one swagging pig. <laughs> uh, don't buy me a pig, Ben. I will send it back. No, I was just trying to see if I. this is this is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I found a stupid cartoon image of a pig with a bandana and sunglasses and a nose ring. Good. Good. Yeah. Gangster pig. I love it. Um, yep. How many more? more pirate pig than gangster pig. Even better. Yeah. Um, continuing on, the desire of the righteous ends only in good. The expectation of the wicked in wrath um here's one verse 24 one gives freely yet grows all the richer another withholds what he should give and only suffers want mm. this is an approach to to wealth kind of thing isn't it because if you're if you're willing that's a you are in my Midwestern accent, by the way. If you're willing to um, to be generous with what you've been given, you see the the like implications of what you can give and how that can impact people's lives. And if you don't, like if you're not generous with what you have, then... you're never really going to understand what the money that you have can do. Yeah. I, and I think there's also just an anecdotal truth to this. When you're giving in the sense of you're giving your time or your money to God, he's not going to leave you. Hanging. He He's going to provide and, uh, yeah, there's some there's some truth to that. There's a lot of truth to that. I think yeah. whatever for whatever I think is worth. Yeah, whether it's a divine feedback or just like you will have a greater appreciation for what you have already when you are generous with it. I think either one of those applies as a very strong truth out of this proverb. Yeah. Well, and it's continued in the next few proverbs. Um Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and the one who waters will himself be watered. And then on the flip side, the people curse him who holds back grain, but a blessing is on the head of him who sells it. So it's more of this uh, generosity. It's like it's going to work out for you, I suppose. It's It's more of the theme, what goes around comes around. Um, yes we good to step forward I know we're we've been running for a minute here and we still got a few verses so yeah, uh, let's just let's just cruise through, through these last few okay um, whoever diligently seeks good seeks favor but the evil comes to him who searches for it duh um, whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. Whoever troubles his own household will inherit the wind, but the fool will be a servant to the wise of heart. Let's pause on that one for a second there. Will inherit the wind. Yeah. Is this an Avatar The Last Airbender kind of thing? Because I'm okay with that. No. Unfortunately not. I'm thinking of, I'm trying to think of situations where inheriting wind would actually be good, but I think unless you're like, 
an old timey sailboat captain. <laughs> you just get a bag and you can open it and it pushes your sails forward. Yeah, exactly. And everybody else is like, we have gasoline, so that does that for us. Yeah. It's expensive, but you can just buy it at, at the store, at the gas yeah. station. I I saw this really funny article the other day for um that there's uh movement towards using uh sales on large conta- uh, container ships again to help like make them more efficient and uh, uh I also saw that article and it was like praising it's the merits of technology it's like yeah praising the merits of this newfangled technology called sails that have existed for literally thousands of years um <laughs> yeah oh we're going back we're going back um maybe the Amish had it right <laughs> continuing forward uh, the the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and whoever captures souls is wise. Um, so I guess be more concerned about the spiritual than anything else. Yeah, that's that's interesting because the the fruit of the righteous, like this, is very Jesusy. Like this is New Testament language. You don't find this as much in the Old Testament. So that's a cool connection. Yeah. Um, and if the righteous is repaid on earth, how much more the wicked and the sinner? And I think this, this has some anecdotal truth as well in that sometimes when we talk about righteousness, a lot of times we talk about the reward being heavenly. Being like, you're not going to experience this reward until the afterlife. But a lot of times we'll see the punishment for the wicked and the sinner be much more immediate. And it's something we, which I think is a function of our merciful God in that punishment and discipline in this life gives you an opportunity to repent and to turn to faith and to receive forgiveness. Whereas if you don't get your punishment until the end, it is too late and you're stuck with hell so i think even punishment in this life i think that's an act of mercy Uh, yeah and it's god trying to encourage repentance um and bring people to faith yeah it's safe to share this because the uh actually no it's not because this is going to come up before i preach the sermon so i'm gonna only give you bits of my upcoming sermon here um Isaiah 45, uh, verse 7, in the King James, gets translated as evil, and it implies that God creates evil. Um, But it's just a terrible translation for that particular word, at least in the modern English. Um, And the the entire point of the the verses that precede it and the the chapter as a whole are, are talking about how God brings reproof and it's a good thing. God brings calamity down on people and it's a good thing. It like, we will, we will face things on earth. When you look at things with that frame, revelation becomes a much more hopeful book. Yeah. Like reproof, calamity, destruction, um, all of these things that cause us to fear our God, not just love and trust him above all things. Um, if you memorized your catechism, you're probably familiar with that language. They're good. And we should, we should be willing to accept like there will be things in our lives that, knock us off our feet a little bit, but it's in order to remind us of how God is caring for us in the midst of all of it and not just when we're at our lowest. Yes. Um, You got a takeaway from this? Yeah. Don't be a jerk. 
I mean, like we shouldn't have to say that as often as we do, but I think it's appropriate. Yeah, I think to to kind of expand it though, this this particular set of passages spends a lot of time kind of thinking about cause and effect. Um, so my encouragement out of this would be spend more time thinking about the effects of the things that you do. Um, like there are times to rush in. There are times to, to make a hasty decision and, and go for it. And um, you'll know when those come up because you don't have time to like make a deep, thoughtful decision. But if you there have time to follow Treebeard's advice. Which one are you going for here? Tree. Don't be hasty. Ah. Uh, I see what you're saying now. Talking about pearls before swine, man. Hey, hey. I I thought you were going for we and uh we and what's the what's the phrase? We ends like to take our time or something like that. I, he does also say that. Yeah. So pardon my, my okay, okay. lack of immediate I guess response. I can accept that. Yeah. I think my takeaway would be a closely related, and that is what goes around comes around. So so make sure what you're sending out is something you want to get back. Um, share this podcast. If you think it was if it, if it was worth people's time, go ahead and give it a share. We appreciate that. Uh, if you can rate us on whatever platform you listen on, that does help the show out. We we would love to see it grow. Um, just because we think that would be cool, and we think it's a worthwhile product to put out. And uh, we have a Facebook page. If you don't have our contact info and you want to contact us, you can use the Facebook page. And that is for topic suggestions. That is for um, if you want a certain guest host on or you want us to bring you on. We're okay with that. We'll bring on listeners. Uh, you just got to let us know and probably bring your own topic. And um, that's what that's for. And we we do sell a shirt. If you want to buy a shirt, go to edgewaterlutheran.org slash gear. And the shirt is on that list, on that page. You might have to scroll down a little bit, but it's on there. So uh, with all that, brothers and sisters, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.